Today we're going to try something new and have an open discussion on a heated topic. Recently in Israel, the government has put out a series of commercials poking fun at the country, all as an aim to involve average Israelis in a bid to defend the Holy Land abroad. The government is adding an English language Hasbara website to the existing Hebrew one, as well as passing out literature to locals before they board a plane abroad. A genius idea or completely ludicrous? We are now joined by Jerusalem Post correspondent Chaviv Rettiger and former consul for media and public affairs at the Israeli consulate in New York, David Saranga, to answer these questions and more. Thanks for joining us, guys. Chaviv, what do you think are good or bad aspects of the current government's campaign? I think the current government's campaign is, um, is, is absolutely terrible uh, for one reason. Okay. I think it completely misses the point. It's a good campaign in and of itself. It's a campaign that asks people who like Israel to talk about how much they like Israel. Fantastic. Um, but it completely misses the point. Uh, the, one of the commercials has somebody standing next to a camel in the desert saying, Israelis ride on camels. I don't know anybody in Iowa. I don't know many people in Iowa, but I know that people in Iowa don't think Israelis ride on camels. It's, it's just not the problem. This country is facing a vast worldwide uh, media and branding and political campaign that seeks to turn it into this, this, this awful, um, awful thing. And people are responding to that campaign, good people, people who have no reason to hate Israel, are just hearing so many times that Israel is this awful place that's doing these awful things. They're seeing pictures. This is a narrative that's becoming entrenched in the media itself, in the media networks themselves. And so to run a campaign that's this sort of Masbirim website about how great Israel is, it's, uh, it's beside the point. David, we clearly know what Chaviv thinks about the campaign, not so positive. Do you agree or disagree with him? I totally disagree with him. The initiative of asking the Israelis to take part in the Hasbara efforts or in Israel's a, a, a PR efforts is something positive. There are thousands of Israelis traveling abroad every year, business people, a young people who just finished the army. This is the best way to convey a message through the people. And the aim of the campaign is to bring to the knowledge of these people general information. Now, the campaign which I don't represent the campaign, I'm not part of this campaign, but from what I understand, the aim of the campaign are Israelis. This is not a campaign for people abroad. This is a campaign for Israelis to know how to deliver the message. And they think it's something positive. And Javier, what do you think about what David has to say? Uh, the, the problem is so big um, that, the, that, that the fact that this campaign, look, this is the Ministry of Public Diplomacy. Um, it's its only real initiative, and nobody else is doing anything else. And so um, it's it's a tremendous question. What Israel, you know, again, when you have the defense minister of Israel say in a speech at the Herzliya conference the word apartheid six times or so, it doesn't matter what he meant. It doesn't matter what the intellectual, the careful intellectual structuring, whether he means apartheid about Israeli Arabs, or he means it in the West Bank, or he means it just about the one road, or he means it... It doesn't matter. The word apartheid is becoming a label. Human beings don't think in careful, logical constructs. Human beings think in labels and categories. And Israel is losing a fight over labels and categories, and it's not even capable of articulating the problem and then beginning to deal with the fact that it's labeling itself. So you have had a deputy defense minister two years ago threaten the Palestinians in Gaza with Holocaust. He didn't really threaten the Palestinians in Gaza with Holocaust. He was talking on the radio and is being bombastic. You have Ehud Barak talking about apartheid in the West Bank. He didn't really mean apartheid in the West Bank. He was being um, controversial or trying to stake out a position on the left of himself or something. And, and so you have people who don't understand that we're not talking about, you know, the guys who ran Obama for the presidency, they didn't, when they ran Obama, they didn't respond with careful, logically constructed arguments about somebody branded Obama a racist because he had a problematic pastor. He gave a speech about racism where his tone of voice and his grandmother were much more important than any kind of rational discussion. They were running a campaign of labels and categories and, and, and this is, I mean, branding, right? This is what Israel is not doing. And so compared to what needs to be, it, when you consider the actual battlefield, this is absolutely meaningless and useless. David, do you think that this campaign has got something to do with the new trends of social media? Before talking about <clears throat> social media, I would like to refer to what Khaviv just said. And I would like to put the topic in a more wider uh, uh, aspect. 
First, I wish that the decision makers in Israel would take Israel's image as one component when they are taking a decision. First, something that I'm not sure that they're really doing. First. Second, talking about the language that politicians use. Uh, yes, it's important that they will choose more carefully the words they are, they are using, especially when they are giving interviews or when they speak in international forums. Mm -hmm. Because talking to the CNN is different than talking to Channel 2 inside Israel, first. And the second thing Israel is doing, and Israel is doing a lot of things in order to improve its image. I mean, I know from the little I know what we did in New York and what the other consulates in the United States and what our, our embassies are doing, it's a lot, but still, it's not enough. And here, I think it's important that the average Israeli will take part in this campaign. Talking about social media, social media is a great tool, and it's also a great platform to bring the Israelis into this dialogue or to make the Israelis a, a, or to bring the Israelis to these platforms in order to have a dialogue with people abroad. Because at the end of the day, it's much more convincing when someone in Ohio, in Denver, in Paris, Rome, or London is having a dialogue with an Israeli rather than just an official Israeli spokesperson trying to deliver his message. But you say, Chaviv, that in Iowa, they don't believe that Israelis are on camels and in the desert. Do, do you think, David, that that's really true, that people abroad don't think Israelis live I'm not, fami I'm not familiar with camels, <laughs> but talking about the perception that people have uh, regarding Israel. We run some focus groups a few years ago in the United States, and people were thinking that women in Israel are wearing burqas. So, I still believe that there is a lot of ignorance when it comes to Israel, and not only when it comes to Israel, when it comes to also other parts of the world. But the campaign, or the main goal of the campaign that you were talking about, are Israelis, once again. And they tried. I don't think they succeeded, but the, the, the Ministry for, for Public Diplomacy tried to bring this message to the Israelis in a humoristic way something that I, I, I'm afraid they, they missed. Right.